This tutorial talks through the various things that you should think about before and when you go out performing using Live in Public. Before you go anywhere, practice your set thoroughly at home, with everything set up in the same way that it will be when you come to perform. Try to get your set into a rough order that you wish to play it in, although do try to avoid planning it too exactly because you need the flexibility to be able to jump around and respond to the crowd as you go. Once you have your music prepared, you should do a few checks to make sure that everything plays back correctly. The easiest way to get live to run smoothly is to minimise all other activity on the computer. Shut down all programmes that you're not using and be careful of opening or closing any programmes whilst using live. You should also shut down any background programmes that you're not going to need, such as virus and spyware scanners, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. To make sure that all your computer's system sounds are turned off, since it can be really embarrassing if the crowd suddenly hears an error message during your set. Have a think about what screen resolution setting you want to use while you're performing. In a dark noisy venue, it's often easier to have a slightly higher screen resolution than you may use at home, so that you're not struggling to focus on the screen. Have a look at how your tracks are laid out on the screen. You can widen the width of your main tracks and reduce the width of any less important tracks. Also make sure that your clip labelling is as clear and concise as possible. If you've tweaked your latency and buffer settings in Live's preferences, make sure that you set these back to the best settings for performance. Once you've got your set ready to go, do a reliability test and see how Live performs with everything going at the same time. Turn on all your tracks at once and set all the effects that you're likely to use going at the same time. You can then watch the CPU load meter. If the load meter doesn't go too high and you don't hear any disruptions or dropouts in the sound, then you know your computer can cope with whatever you throw at it. If you do find that Live's struggling to keep up with you, try the following tips to reduce CPU usage. For reference, this list is included within the Resources section. Don't have too many audio clips open within your set. Deactivate any audio clips that you're not going to use. Cut down the number of effects that you use at the same time. If you're not using an effect, turn it off. Be careful of CPU-hungry third-party plugins. Use Repitch Warp Mode instead of Complex Mode for some of your audio clips. Don't use high quality mode for audio clips. Use mono audio files instead of stereo files wherever possible. On the audio tab of preferences, disable any audio inputs and outputs that aren't being used. And render or freeze software instrument clips. I now talk about a few things to think about when choosing the equipment you need to take to a gig. For your reference, there is an equipment checklist included within the resources section. Most DJs use a laptop when performing live, although there's no reason why you can't use a small desktop with a flat screen. Sasha uses an iMac to DJ from, which gives you power and a big screen, with the convenience of all being in one package. If you use a laptop, make sure the battery is fully charged before you get there, and be careful of it overheating in a hot and sweaty venue. It's a good investment to buy the best set of headphones that you can afford. It can be worth considering wireless headphones since these eliminate the risk of turning round and accidentally breaking the cable. Whilst in venues, be careful of being regularly exposed to high noise levels. Many DJs and musicians suffer from hearing loss and your ears are your most important asset. To help protect against this, you can buy customised earplugs that are specifically designed for musicians. It's worth taking a few spare items with you to the venue to get you out of trouble if something doesn't work. These can include spare cables, an extension cable or four-way, spare headphones, screwdrivers, fuses and adapters in case the equipment you're plugging into hasn't got the connections you expected. You should have a backup of playing music with you in case your computer unexpectedly crashes or fails during your set. You can do this by leaving a mix CD queued up, or by plugging an MP3 player into a spare input on the mixer. This way you can play some music while you restart your computer and get live ready to go again. Finally, stick a few mix CDs of your set in your bag, 
so that if you get the chance you can give them to promoters to help get you more gigs. Probably the most important thing to do before you go to a gig is to make sure that all your data is backed up at home. Your computer is particularly vulnerable in public from hazards like spilt drinks and drunken people, and also from theft. If possible, try to get your equipment locked up before and after your set, and in particular, don't leave a laptop alone, because these are a prime target for thieves. Make sure that your equipment is covered on your home insurance, and if it's not, take out a dedicated insurance policy for it. Let's now talk about what to do when you set up and begin your set. As you connect your equipment, take your time and try to arrange it as closely as you can to how you have it at home. Check that all your cables are firmly connected and then test how it sounds on headphones before you try to turn it up loud. Once you've done this, if you can, check what the sound quality is like for the audience by listening from the middle of the dance floor. It can often sound very different here to how it is in the DJ booth where you're listening through your own personal monitor speaker. You can then make adjustments as appropriate. Before you start playing music from session view, make sure that you press the stop clips button so that you know no clips that are laid out in arrangement view will unexpectedly come in during your set. Now check that the starting tempo is correct for your first tune. It can be worthwhile turning the overall volume of the music down when you first come on. The reason for this is that then you have somewhere to go as your set develops. If you start off with everything at 100%, then there's nowhere that you can go to. However, if you start at 90%, then you have room to build up the intensity as you progress. As you approach each mix, take your time and be methodical. It's easy to make a simple mistake with live and unexpectedly cut the music out. So think carefully before each action. While you get into the swing of it, try and make your first mix or two quite straightforward and then as you get going you can get more adventurous. Always test each tune in headphones before you do the mix out loud. Warp markers do sometimes get moved out of time, so check that they all sound in time before you start to mix it. Be careful when using keyboard shortcuts. It's very easy to press a key which has been set to trigger a sample by accident and stop everything playing. Take your time and make sure you know exactly which sample is triggered by each key. Also, be particularly careful of pressing the spacebar key, because this button will start and stop the whole live set, and if pressed can bring the music to a very sudden halt. If you're looking for easier hands-on control for triggering live, then consider using a MIDI controller such as Akai's APC40 or Novation's Launchpad. There's been an element of opposition to DJs using laptops on stage as opposed to vinyl or CD, arguing that it takes the skill out of DJing. Therefore, digital DJs need to make an extra effort to improve the overall performance and enable the crowd to feel in touch with the DJ. This might mean emphasising parts of the performance, such as deliberately emphasising the mix, chopping back and forth between tracks, and mixing in acapellas or effects. Try and vary the levels of intensity and emotion as your set progresses and try to create a complete musical experience for the audience, not just an hour of your favourite tunes. Also, try to cut down the amount of time that you're looking down at the screen and engage with the crowd instead. It's worth recording your set when you perform so that you can listen back to it afterwards. Either click the record button so that all your actions are recorded into arrangement view or use an external MP3 recorder or digital audio recorder so that you can record the output from the DJ mixer. You can then evaluate your set afterwards or burn it to CD to use for promotion. Finally, let's run through a few common troubleshooting problems that can happen whilst you're performing. You may find when using a laptop that you get a ground hum through the speakers. This can be stopped in a variety of ways. If you run the laptop off battery power, then it will normally stop. Alternatively, buy the best quality audio cables you can and a good quality USB cable. If this doesn't help, then you can buy a noise suppressor or ground loop isolator from a car stereo supplier. This prevents interference between equipment and the speakers and should stop any unwanted noise. If you get live or ready to play and then find that no sound's coming through, take your time and make sure that everything's set up how it should be. Firstly, check that your audio interface is plugged in correctly and that it's been recognised and selected in preferences. Next, click on the I.O. icon 
and check that audio 2 is set correctly. If that doesn't help, check that the track isn't muted and that the volume is turned up. If you still can't hear anything, try plugging a set of headphones into the output from your sound card and then you'll be able to work out if the problem is actually with your external mixer or the speakers. If you're patient and logical, you will find that most problems can be solved quite quickly. Even when everything's going really well, sometimes you'll attempt to mix into a track and realise it's suddenly gone silent. At this point, you need to quickly work out the problem. Have you left a track on solo? Have you turned the EQ right down? Have you muted the track? Have you been using an effect and left it in an extreme setting? Have you left the crossfader across? Again, normally you'll find the answer is very simple. For all of these settings, try and get into the habit of returning them to their normal position after you've finished each mix. The final point is to be careful of unplugging your audio interface or MIDI controller whilst you're using live, because if you do this, you'll normally have to restart the program before you can use them again. This is the end of the section on performing live. Good luck, I wish you well.